Good afternoon. So in part one, we talked about how the China RMB, the currency here of China, is very tightly regulated and controlled by the China government and the China Central Bank, especially compared to the other major foreign currencies, like the US dollar, the euro, etc. And the motivation for doing that is to keep the products coming from China factories more competitive. If the RMB is kept low against the US dollar compared to other countries' currencies, that means that foreign buyers can buy more from a China factory than they can a comparable factory. That means the prices coming out of China factories are more competitive compared to those coming from South Korea, say, or East Europe, or especially West Europe or Canada. So they are very strongly motivated to encourage their export sector in this way. The second thing is that there is real deflation happening here in China in the local currency. The prices of everything are falling even in China terms. So professional consulting services, logistics, delivery costs locally, <clears throat> those are all much less expensive today than in recent years. These are two factors that foreign business executives here in China are using to great advantage for the benefit of their companies and their customers back home, especially in relation to shipping. Okay, and so we'll use a typical example and also we can explain some of the common shipping and payment terms which will help it hopefully be more understandable. So imagine you have a buyer in Chicago, Illinois, the middle of the country, and he is buying a excavator. An excavator is a large construction machine that scoops dirt out and moves it somewhere else. So a buyer in Chicago, Illinois wants to buy a large excavator from a factory here in China. He will go to his bank and open a letter of credit, an LC, which includes the manufacturing and delivery of that excavator to his address in Chicago, Illinois. So once the letter of credit is open, the factory here in North China, locally here, will put a American engine in it and build it to American specifications. That will take a few days and once it's out the factory door, that's when the factory is owed money. You might not be paid yet, but that's when the factory is owed money. They've done all they're expected to do. That is called EXW or XWorks. <clears throat> so the factory has done his job, he's built the excavator, ready for shipment to the United States, and it's EXW. Then the excavator has to be delivered to the outbound port here, probably in Qingdao, just right over there. And <clears throat> so the delivery to the port will be FOB, or free on board. That includes the EXW, the XWorks price, plus local delivery to the outbound port here in North China. Then it's got to sail across the ocean. It has to go from Qingdao, China to New York, say. So it sails across the Pacific and the Atlantic, gets to New York where it's unloaded. That's CIF. That's cost insurance freight of everything we talked about so far to the country of destination. Then it's got to go from a truck or a train probably to Chicago where it's going to be unloaded finally at the buyer's address with all the taxes and duties paid or DDP delivery duty paid so FOB free on board is EXW X works price plus local transportation here in China CIF cost insurance freight is FOB plus shipping across the ocean to the United States. DDP, delivery duty paid, is the cost of tariffs plus local transportation in the US from the CIF port in New York, possibly. So 
We're talking now about how the RMB is falling against the dollar. And that means we want to put as much of that shipping process as possible in RMB. We want to pay US dollars, convert those into RMB, and pay for that labor as late in the process as we can. Okay? <clears throat> that means we have to do at least CIF pricing using China companies. Because as soon as we start paying in US dollars for products and services in US dollars, we lose that advantage that the deflation and the exchange rate gives us. It's very common for uh, importers, for big buyers in the United States or Europe to get several price quotes and they'll call a broker in New York City, uh, one in Los Angeles, one in Singapore, and one in China, Shanghai. <clears throat> and the prices are very, very different. Even though it's the same piece of equipment in the same factory, going on the same shipping container, going on the same ship, being delivered to the same address, the prices may be thousands of dollars different. And the reason is New York, LA, Singapore, London, these are high cost cities and the consultants there are being paid in US dollars or in British pounds or in Singapore dollars, which is a high value currency. <clears throat> Whereas the Shanghai broker is being paid Shanghai RMB and he's doing as much of that process in China RMB as he can. So the price is true, the price is real. This is an important extra work that business executives and managers here in China have to do. We have to work very closely with freight forwarders and we are, we are going to push that process as far possible as back, as far back as possible, so that we can control pricing and keep the advantage that the falling RMB gives us. It, it amounts to hundreds of dollars in consulting fees and many, many hundreds of dollars on the shipping. If we can keep all of that all the way to CIF in China RMB terms. Thanks for listening. Be good.